notch road to get up here. We're right here and to our east uh, and our bottom, uh, which were, was to a great extent farm, uh, farm, farms in the 1800s. Um, it's now uh, what's called the Glen. So the, the uh, here we're up on top up there. And what has been um, so what what has been worked out is that um, the town had suggested to DCR, the state parks department. We don't want the full thousand acres of the Glen taken away from us and preserved because we think that there is a part of it that could represent future economic opportunities for the community. So, uh, in two, because of all the failed projects, and we'll get talk about a couple of them, but uh, the uh, the town said no. We would like to work out some way that the town of Adams could be responsible for a little bit of this property, which could be uh, an economic generator. And so, in approximately 2004, uh, the state and the town developed a plan by which approximately 50 acres of that thousand acres would be leased by, from the state to the town to develop a plan with approvals from Audubon, approvals from every conceivable um, environmental group, uh, such that a plan has now been approved, signed off by the state and the town. So what this is, is uh, part of, a, of the 50 acres. So this is approximately 11 acres that has been reserved for a campground. Uh, and there are other pieces to it, and that's what we're going to get into a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, they're just gorgeous trails uh, running through it. I mean, you can get lost there, but it is really, uh, truly a, a gorgeous uh, experience. So from time to time when you're walking on the trail, all of a sudden you come into some strange things. And there appear to be um, leftovers from some <laughs> uh, uh, strange citizens, uh, strange moon landings, we don't, we don't know. But the, the point is, is that there is a lot of archaeological evidence of failure here. So this was a major ski resort that was proposed to go up the mountain. And it started in the 50s and the 60s, someone else came in, the 70s, someone else came in, the 80s, another party came in. Uh, and working backwards in the 80s, MGM Grand, um, the uh, casino operator, which is now uh, building a billion dollar facility in Springfield, proposed to the Berkshires that if the Berkshires approved gambling, they would build a huge facility on this property, which would include a ski area, a golf area, a spa, and a casino, and that uh, with 1,600 uh, hotel rooms. Um, and they were prepared to invest in that and build it if Berkshire County approved it. Berkshire County did not approve it, so that's why they're in Springfield. Uh, and be before that, um, there's some more archaeological remnants that you come across when you go off the trail a little bit. And because there were, um, as I mentioned, going backwards, 85 was the MGM Grand. Before that were a developer, also from Springfield, who proposed uh, about 600 condominium units, a hotel, golf course, and ski area. And um, the most of these developers, unfortunately, they did start construction, they did get people excited, they got the governors to write checks, and then they ran out of money. So these projects never happened. But the golf course, as Peter mentioned, did 
take place, and it, and it did last for a few years. Uh, I don't know exactly those years, but uh, so what you, besides finding rebars like this and leftovers like this from proposed hotel, uh, there's a lot of beauty all around it and some gorgeous trees in between, but a lot of this was go golf course. And so there it was mowed down to golf course existence. And, um, and there's all sorts of sprinkling systems and water moving systems throughout the property. And there they have no function anymore. Huh? So uh, what uh, the state has done this past uh, season, meaning from the spring to now, is develop uh, a few miles of trails. So there were some walkable trails, but they've now put uh, chip rock uh, over them so that it, uh, it, it has the potential of being good for bike riding, potential of not getting um, uh, messed up and muddy uh, when there's heavy rains. So it's, a, it's really a very high quality. This is just freshly made. Now what also has taken place here is this past uh, summer, there was the Ilbermorny Festival. And lots of people came out, people dressed up, um, and we'll get into that in a moment. There's the town supervisor there. and. Um, so it, it, it's starting to have a little bit of a new history. Uh, the other thing that uh, the Glen was known for, I don't know how many people here are familiar with skin suspensions, but these are um, people from around the world still do. They come to the Berkshires to get suspended. So a hook about like you would catch sharks with goes through your skin and you get lifted up about 20 or 30 feet. And uh, uh, yeah, it, and it's um, so. The, this is one. The, the Glen was one of those areas that was used uh, for this. What happens is that uh, your skin is very strong; it's leather, and so uh, there's always a doctor uh, present, and there may be like who knows, ten people at a time that are participating in this. Um, so it, the Berkshires is one of the ten top places in America that this is, takes place. So this is a so besides the skin suspensions that drew people not not crowds because it's very private spiritual experience, but it's it's one of the uses of the property. Um, the orchards is another big draw, bringing people to the edge of the property. And this is a, a new road that the uh, Gould Road, which uh, has been paved, uh, and this is done on the, uh, the state's nickel. So um, as opposed to lots of projects, which you have to kind of pray that it all works out, here the state and town have signed off of a, a um, redevelopment deal where the sewer line, the water line, the power lines are already here, and the, the main road has been built. And so, um, and there's some ponds that look swimmable, but it's, there's signs which clearly say you shouldn't uh, use them. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very beautiful spot. So besides, the, when they, the, so the town worked out with the state a campground, and that basically means in the town's description, wooden planks, platforms, where individuals can put their sleeping bags, put their tents, put their yurts, um, and uh, approximately 140 of those were permitted on two sites. So where I pointed out before is about 11 acres and then another location across the road, another 11 acres. And uh, besides that, this spot over here has uh, been approved for an 11,000 square foot, which is very large, 11,000 square foot 
Environmental Education Center. And the town has uh, uh, invited architects to uh, submit proposals and that they've been selected or about to be selected for that project. And, um, uh, and that most likely will be managed by Audubon. Question, are the campsites for through hikers or hikers or are they to drive in? And yeah, they're for anyone. You have to make a reservation and pay for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is that there could be people who may want to stay here, but Peter's full and he'll send them down there. Uh, it could be people who are going to an event at Mass Mocha. It could be uh, people who are coming through, uh, hikers. Uh, could be lots of, you know, there's no special. The, the idea is that there would be a check-in location, and a, this is the this is the plan by which the town has a check-in location. There would be toilets and supervision in that regard, and showers. So how did I get into it? Actually, this gentleman sitting in the corner here, <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Dentor, I believe, was, was there. This is the uh, this is the landscape architect for the state, who laid out the trails throughout the uh, acres involved. And this, where we're standing here, is the, the 11 acres for the campground. Um, uh, and then across the road, the Gould Road, is another 11 acres, and that is for uh, again from the town's perspective for more larger tents and for yurts uh, which are structures like eagles but are canvas. Now where exactly is that? Is that like at the top of Gold Road just before you get to the parking lot? Yes. Okay so it's the left side and the right side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in any case um, when the, when the town mentioned campground, uh, I thought it was, uh, it wasn't something that was interesting to me. It was, that's, a, that's really a Boy Scout or Audubon kind of project. Uh, and they submitted a uh, notice and uh, very few people expressed interest in it. There was one French group that expressed some interest, but basically nobody submitted a proposal. So then the town reissued it and said, okay, we had it once, nobody submitted. That happens a lot. Uh, let's try it again. Um, and um, at that point, uh, Bill uh, and a couple of people actually approached me and said, Ralph, you've got some good ideas. Why don't you take a closer look at this? So uh, that's how I got involved. So instead of uh, uh, having sleeping bags on a piece of wood, which is only seasonal, I said, why don't we try to, where possible, create a kind of hobbit village? <laughs> and um, part of it is, is that one of the uh, truly magical things that, uh, if you believe in God or some spiritual thing, the fact that um, J.K. Rowling had designated the Glen and Mount Greylock as the site for Ilvermorny is a, ma is a very powerful, magical opportunity. So to make just boards uh, that you put your sleeping bag on it seemed to be a waste of an opportunity. So uh, the idea is to kind of get into the spirit of it and that this would be, you we're calling this in some parts of the world, glamping, which is luxury camping. So this, these would not be uh, necessarily heated. They wouldn't have kitchens or anything. It's just really you, you go get into this kind of magical space and you put your sleeping bag. But it, it's covered, so you can do this all year round. <laughs> so again, the, the, you know, this is the first year. Uh, so in November, well, we'll get into that in a second. But basically, uh, uh, November. Uh, J.K. Rowling's movie came out where it was officially mentioned that there'd be some Ilva Morning, which is the school, the only school in North America for witchcraft and wizardry. So you can see how the community is already getting excited by it. So uh, to do these kind of units, you need to have a certain kind of landscape. And so it can't be, you couldn't do it throughout that whole uh, property. 
Um, so this is another um, uh, concept that we're looking to integrate into that, which are, uh, these are glass eagles. And uh, this is from a uh, luxury campground in Finland, and where you can get inside and you could see amazing nature, and it's a real experience. And uh, there, of course, you have the northern lights, which people pay and travel thousands of miles to see. So it's a little bit different, but still, we can, we can do this, um, and we're looking at, at, at integrating some of that here. So if you're going on Gould Road, and you on your left side, uh, as the gentleman just mentioned, uh, is 11 acres, and that's where this would be taking place. Now here's another expression of that. So again, they're not heated, but they are uh, protected. So you could, in bad weather, cold weather, snowy, blizzard conditions, you still could have an interesting experience. And this is where, where that would be taking place. So this is the name of the book and the uh, screenplay that uh, is part of the story. Uh, so if you took this trail, which is across from Cool Road, you get to the 11 acres that uh, was going to be, again, the town was suggesting uh, tents and uh, yurts. And uh, what we're suggesting are 40 luxury cabins. So these would also be year-round. These would be heated, would have toilets, and would have a small kitchenette. They wouldn't be made, it wouldn't be meant that you'd be living in it full time, meaning that we'd hope you'd be going out for the restaurants and so on, or cooking uh, outdoors. But uh, the idea is that um, they would be interesting for either uh, for two people or four people, small cabins, luxury. The rates would be comparable to like the porches, which is. 250, 350 a night. So we're back on this uh, map here, and what I wanted to point out uh, is this. So I, I uh, am troubled by this, the state and um, town's idea of developing this campground nature uh, preserve uh, and also there's a third element which is being discussed, uh, which is a conference center and uh, a more conventional hotel to be located uh, in that 50 acres. Uh, is that it has no connection to the downtown. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's isolated. And we've experienced, and I've been, a, been a, um, having discussions with Mass Mocha, why it's taken them 20 years to integrate into North Adams. And so they have been isolated with a gate around them, but you know, still 80% of North Adams commercial district is vacant. And it, it, any goodness has now filtered out. There are lots of reasons, but I did not want to see the same thing happen, which is that this become a kind of camping nature gem and there's nothing, and all those vacant buildings that we looked at a moment ago stay the same. So what I have proposed here is that uh, right uh, on 8th um, and just a short moment away from the campground is this Adams Middle School which is vacant, 90,000 square feet. And so I am pro I propose to the, the, the town to take this on and add it as part of the project. And so um, uh, it's, in, it's in good shape. There's environmental issues because it's old and, and so on. But, uh, you know, we can see making this into three main functions. One is as a hostel, which is meaning less expensive in rooms so that students, campers, what have you, can uh, have this on a regular basis that's affordable. It would be computers, simple check-in. Uh, amenities, there is a great gym, but we'll get into that in a minute. But you have a lot of facilities which are already there uh, that wouldn't work for a luxury 
hotel, but for a hostel work fine. The auditorium is in great shape. It could be great for movies, theater, presentations, and what have you. And, uh, you know, this is uh, not suggesting these the new beds look exactly this way, but the idea is something simple. Uh, but the, the, they also have a great cafeteria. And in our plan, we are suggesting that this become a real world-class cafeteria with um, not only offering food to the campground and to the hospital, but to the public at large. Um, so we're going to get back to this view in a moment. So this is the train station, which is exactly a one-minute walk this way to the school. This train station now is isolated because the train from North Adams is just shy, about nine-tenths of a mile, uh, to get here. Once it gets here, what's going to happen? Right now, there are over 9,000 people who pay to use that scenic train. It's projected that this year, there may be as many as 15,000. What are they going to do when they get off of this train? There's very little to do in this area of the train station. So the idea that we have is that you walk one minute to the school, and that gym that we looked at a moment ago is converted to a, an augmented reality center. And um, where entrepreneurs who are interested in this new field can get free space to build and develop new businesses, and that um, uh, people who are at the, from the train station that are taking the scenic, that part of what they can do is experience uh, here this area in a very interesting way. So many of the, starting the museums around the world are incorporating uh, augmented reality and virtual reality uh, headsets into experiencing the museum art because you can control, you can say, well, I like this painting, uh, is there anything else by that same artist? And you can all of a sudden magically see right in front of you. So what we would like to do is to actually start off developing two kind of schools here uh, at, the sc at that school, one being for the world of art and working with Clark and Mass Mocha to develop programs uh, which could be sold and developed. And the other is uh, nature so that um, dealing with the types of wildlife that, that is out there. So, so we're talking about the train being right here and the school just being on the other side of this Berkshire Mill building. This is the visitor center. Now, so one of the other um, important parts of our project uh, proposal is that, uh, again, trying to link the downtown with the campground Glen area. And uh, the uh, trail, which is 18 miles long now and eventually will be go all the way to Williamstown, is already drawing thousands of people who come uh, every day when the weather is right and the weekends uh, even more. Uh, and people are downloading their bicycles as families or individuals you know, going so at the same time, again, we have these huge amount of vacant structures. So what we're suggesting is really opening up um, five new bike shops. So this is one bike store that a, a school teacher from uh, Boston rents in the summer and has a bicycle uh, rental business. And he's doing very, uh, claims very well. Um, and it's bringing in lots of people who, uh, who are visiting the area who didn't bring their bicycles with them. They're renting here and going just around the corner onto the trail. But we think that there could be the support for several of these. So also, all of a sudden, there's also bicycles in some of the architecture. This is a court which was done several years ago in Adams. Now, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that uh, uh, in Adams, many people do know that Susan B. Anthony was born here. But what they don't know is that Susan B. Anthony was a super supporter of bicycle riding for women. 
and that this could really be a very significant marketing uh, theme push for Adams to be a uh, maybe the most serious bicycle community uh, in the Northeast. That's that would be our goal if we were going to be doing this. So we take over ten of those empty stores and have different bike entrepreneurs go in there and do their thing, and. Uh, it's happening in other parts of the country. So this is a guy actually in Kingston, New York, who was a, a, a tech executive who wanted to kind of back off and get uh, into something he really loved and do with his hands. So he opened up a bike store. And I think at this point in time, we can get lots of uh, entrepreneurs who are burnt out or semi-retired and so on to open up some of these uh, stores. This is a uh, attractive bike store in Great Barrington and they brought on these electric hybrids so that the, even the mountains can be uh, used. So again, we have tons of these available and uh, handsome bike shops could be created. There's this Cape Cod, but if we have the kind of activity could be as, action, as big as this. So here you can see a couple of people going across downtown. Uh, that dashed line, that's part of the trail crossing Route 8. So the other thing that um, we think is very important is that uh, who's familiar with REI, the chain of the hiking stores? Well, they went out of business. And uh, they, they had one in the Berkshire Mall, and that was, uh, the chain was bought by a, a, a British company as, that's closing half of them. So if we were ready, and we still might choose to do this, is to contact the managers of those stores. Um, they would. Uh, be interested in opening up in our little shops, not big super, supermarket kinds of places, but small shops that specialize. One just on